All right, so, uh, oop, Abhijit, this thing. Wait, we are in, where is this? Travers? Yeah. In training. Yeah, training time, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're recording. Uh, let me close this. Uh, so uh, we've been meeting for a couple weeks, and uh, so we've been uh, talking uh, mean stack, right? Uh, uh, but we haven't covered the entire framework. Uh, mean is really an, an acronym, uh, and it stands for M is Mongo, ADB, uh, E is Express, which we've done this. We've done Express for creating web services, responding to API, things like that, right? And hosting static content, right? Um, A stands for Angular, which uh, we've been using for uh, creating uh, client-side, single-page applications that um, uh, query for static content, it also dynamic content, and dynamically update the DOM uh, to, give, to, to give a uh, seamless single-page application, right? Uh, yep, and uh, and then the other one is uh, Node Node.js, which is the server that we've been using to um, uh, create the web services that respond to uh, dynamic JSON data, and also um, uh, to host the static content. Right. Uh, so we we still have to uh, look at uh, MongoDB. Right. Right up to this point, that we've been using Express to receive the API. Uh, uh, respond to API, get JSON, and store it in a local variable on the server, right? And as long as the server is running, the 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 data is still there, right? But the, if the server goes down, it's gone, right? So we need to store it permanently somewhere. Uh, it's uh it's hosting the static content, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So from the server's point of view, it's static. Right, but when it gets downloaded to the browser, from the browser's point of view, it's dynamic, right? Because the JavaScript executes on the browser, but from the server's point of view, it's all static. It's under the public directory. It's all st static HTML and CSS. Uh, the, it, it, we're also hosting dynamic APIs where we ask for JSON, we post JSON, we retrieve JSON, and that JSON grows, shrinks, right? As we post new data, there, it gets pushed to an array, it grows and whatnot, right? Uh, there is additional uh, uh, dynamic uh, dynamic content from the service point of view, very much like JSPs, ASPs, where the content is dynamically generated on the server. Uh, so there's 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 also that which we're not going to take a look. Well, we could. It's it's pretty. If you've done JSPs, you'll feel right at home. Uh, and so it's it's dynamically generating pages on the server, which which is not which is completely the opposite of single page application, which is rendering dynamically on the client, right? Uh, so let's let's look at today at MongoDB, so we can store the data as opposed to in the Node.js instance, we'll store it in a permanent place to put it. Um, all right, so MongoDB. So MongoDB, uh, you can uh, install it if you go to mongodb.org. Uh, you can download uh, the uh, it, it's free. Um, install it locally on your machine. Um, uh, it's a it's an object oriented uh, database. It allows you to store objects. It's not a relational database, right? So um, uh, it allows you to store raw JSON objects, right? Collections of objects. We don't call them tables. We call them collections. Uh, we don't call them records. We call them uh, documents, right? Um, uh, but it it's, it does it doesn't it doesn't have some of the things you would expect in uh, relational databases, uh, such as being able to join things, um, uh, you, you store actual object instances. Right? So, you, so a lot of the things are, might be a little bit different. Um, so you can download and install it. Uh, once you install it, um, yes. Yeah. Uh, once you install it, you can uh, run it. it. It will install a couple of uh, executables, uh, two of them. Are, are the ones we're going to be using mostly. One is to start the database, uh, which is MongoD. Um, and then the client, there's a, there's a client that you can, you can interact with it. Right? So I'm going to start the server. It's MongoD. Um, and um, the default, the default uh, uh, 
port uh, that it listens to is at 27.0.117. That's, that's the default port. Um, uh, you can connect to it uh, using the command line Mongo. Right? Uh, and now um, this, is, this is just a CLI to, uh, to be able to connect to it. And you can do things, things such as uh, show uh, DBs. Can you even read that? Uh, so these are all the databases and you know, many things that you would expect like any other database, right? You can uh, use a particular database. Um, let's, let's create one for, for our purposes. We'll call it maybe HMH. Um, if it doesn't exist, it just creates it. Uh, and in here you can create um, tables. Um, but instead of tables, we call them collections, right? And uh, unlike... Uh, Relational databases, there are no schemas in uh, in here. Okay, uh, in a so collection, you can put anything. Right? I mean, so why are there collections? I mean, uh, it, there, it, uh, even though it doesn't have schemas, you you would enforce certain types of schema, uh, but it does not enforce uh, the schema. So you can right? put any object in any, any object anywhere. Right? Not that you would do it, uh, but it's it's uh, it's meant for storing collections of objects, and those objects could be whatever you want. And each record could be different. Um, the data types could be different, even though they might have the same field. Um, not that you would do that. <laughs> what about uh, the relationships between objects? Uh, they, uh, you can have relationships uh, that you could have an object have a reference to another object, almost like a pointer. Uh, and it would allow you to navigate to that other object. right? And um, uh, you could just have it uh, represented as a, as a pointer right? and not actually have it in memory. Or you can ask for it, so I have a pointer, you know, instantiate it, and then you can get back the original object. Uh, so you could, uh, you could have um, various levels of things that would look like joints, right? The, the, the pointer sort of are the equivalent of like foreign keys uh, to some other record, right? And, um, and the join would be, hey, go fetch that other object of which I have a reference to, right? That's kind of like the join, right? Uh, but again, we, we have to think about this as objects being stored, not records that have foreign key, primary key. No such thing here. Okay. Uh, so let's let's um, uh, let's uh, let's let's start uh, creating a uh, collection. Uh, you can say DB, and then uh, DB is a prefix uh, that um, allows you to uh, uh, interact with a particular collection. Right. So, for instance, I. I might say product, right? Uh, and I, I might uh, insert a, a, an object in there. And objects are um, stored in raw JSON, right? Well, internally, it, it um, compacts it using binary J JSON, right? And, but for user, for, for user consumption, it then expands it back into its original um, uh, uh, raw text uh, representation. So you could, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, when you say uh, use H HMH, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it, right? Otherwise, it'll just switch to it, okay? Uh, and the collection, if it doesn't exist, uh, it creates the collection, right? If it's not, then it just uses the existing collection that you're, that you're referencing. For instance, um, uh, here you might say that the product name, um, I say uh, R180. Uh, oh, wait, uh, do we... Oh, did I misspell it? Okay, so it inserted. Uh, so I, I can now you say uh, show collections, uh, and there is a one collection called product right, that was not there before. Um, I can also insert a um, a lesson. I can insert uh, a lesson uh, lesson one. Right, and then it says, uh, I inserted one, and then I can ask for all the collections in there. Right, there's two collections, lesson and product. And then I can ask it, what, what is the content of both collections? So it's sort of like a select star. Right? Uh, you can say db.lesson.find. Um, um, find is the equivalent of a select. Notice that it's a function that takes arguments. Uh, in that argument, you could put things such as uh, filters. Right? I only want those. Uh, records that meet a particular criteria. Right? If you don't provide any argument, it's as if you do select star and there's no where. Okay? 
So like this, it just returns the, all the records in the lesson collection. Okay, notice that there's the attribute there, lesson, right? Right, the name of the lesson, okay? Uh, which is an, a, an attribute that I created, right? When I said lesson. And notice that additionally it created this, um, this, um, is it here? Notice that it created this additional ID, right, which is the equivalent of a, of a primary key, okay? It automatically creates a unique identifier, right, to keep track of each instance, yes? Uh, let's create a couple more. We can say um, we can insert uh, another product, right, uh, E3D, right, and uh, we can uh, then ask for all the products, DB product uh, dot find, uh, it returns all the products, right? Name, whatnot. Yes. Um, I can uh, just like I can insert. I can also remove. Uh, so I can say DB product remove, right? And then I can filter. If I say remove, and I don't put put any filters. Uh, it doesn't just remove everything. Uh, it just doesn't. It just ignores it. It won't remove anything. Right? They're still there. Right. But if you want to remove something, you do have to provide some kind of filter, right? Uh, if you don't provide any filter like this, then it will remove everything because it matches everything. Okay, it does. I'm not providing any filter, so if I do that, it'll remove all the records. Uh, or I can specify. I'm sorry. No, no, no validation. Uh, or I can specify the one that has the name R180. Okay, and it'll just remove that one single uh, record. Right. I can then ask, and notice I only have E3D. Make sense? Right, everybody okay. Um, I can, I can, yes. Just to add on that, there is a IP you used in my previous project. Yeah. There is something called 3T MOVA client. If you use that, it's something similar to the SQL work. Then yes, you yeah, can, yeah. You can use that. Yep, yeah. There, there's quite a few graphical yeah. uh, yeah. interfaces yeah. that uh, yeah. allow you to interact with this, yeah. Um, so this is manually, right? We're doing this manually. Um, uh, you know, if you want to look at the data and whatnot, uh, we we really want to be able to do this programmatically, right? And not, not not manual. I just I just wanted to give you just a flavor uh, on on what you could could do um, manually. Uh, you could you could there's all, there's several other uh, you know syntactic sugar finders, right? You can provide find by object ID, meaning if you give me the ID, I will find that object by its unique identifier. Um, find um, uh, find one, meaning uh, you can provide a filter, and if if uh, if it matches more than one, I'll just return the first one. Uh, presumably, you know it's 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 unique because maybe you know maybe product name is unique, right? But you're not you don't want to use the primary key. You're using the the name, and you know it's unique. Um, anyway, there's quite a few uh, 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 methods here. You know, remove. Uh, okay. Uh, so we want to do this programmatically. So programmatically, uh, meaning we want to do it from our applications, right? From within our application. Let me close this. Close projects. Close project. We want to do it programmatically from here, right? The uh, our project. Uh, the project we are using is this one, right? Mean. Uh, basically, from from these uh, from. From this app over here, right? Uh, all these, all these updates, find, delete, product, create, product, right? From here, we want to programmatically store everything in the database, retrieve things from within it. Right now, we're hard coding, we're storing everything in this, in this array, right? In this local array, right? Instead, we want to store it in a collection in a database. Yes. All right. So to do that, we're going to need a uh, a library, right? To do that, right? Just like, uh, uh, just just like in in, in Java. You would use uh, different libraries to connect to either SQL or, or um, uh, uh, SQL Server or, or whatever whatever vendor you want to connect to. You need a jar file to 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 to, to, to. Uh, and there are several options. The uh, one of the more uh, um, uh, common ones the, that it's uh, more, most more popular is Mongoose JS. Mongoose JS is one of the more popular libraries. Uh, that allow programmatic access uh, to the Mongo database, okay? And, um, and it's uh, it's very easy to use. Right? If you uh, you just need to um, you know require the Mongoose library, uh, add, give it a URL pointing to the uh, to the instance. If it's local host, then it's it knows already the port you know, to twenty seven thousand something or other, right? 
Um, and, uh, and then you need to tell it you know, what the collection is, uh, what, what, what the collection that you want to connect to. And then you can start querying things. Right? You can insert, you can create, and find, and things like that. Right? So let's, 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 uh, let's uh, start playing around with uh, connecting to this. All right? Everybody okay? Are you still with me? Um, all right, so, so let's, uh, let's, let's review a little bit where we were. Um, if you remember, in our app.js, right, we had created all these uh, web service endpoints, right, being able to retrieve all products, retrieve one product, if you give me the ID of the product, uh, create a product, right, um, if, you, if you provide me a JSON object, or remove an existing product if you give me the ID of that product. Uh, and this one is for updating a product that already existed, if you give me the ID of that product. Yes? So basically all the CRUD operations, yes? And they were all updating this, this, uh, this array, okay? this array. Instead, we want to connect to the database, yes? So let's do that. Does the ID that we were using match the ID that Mongo uses? No, we were making up the IDs. Right? I, I don't mean the value. The, the attribute name, yes, that's, that's why I, I, I uh, thinking ahead, uh, I, I chose the attribute called underscore ID. You know, because later on I knew that Mongo uh, would want to use the, the attribute ID here. Right? So that, this same ID that we were playing around with is going to match to this ID in Mongo. All right? Yes? Um, all right, so let's, uh, uh, let's connect to the database. So to connect to the database, we'll first have to install the library. So to install the library, um, we're going to need to do um, uh, npm install, right? And the library is called mongoose. Right, so it's npm install. Notice that in my package JSON, we do not have a dependency on that library. Notice that we only depend on body parser and express, right? But if we install uh, mongoose and we do the save, it will download it, install it, put it in, the, um, in node modules. Uh, so locally in node modules, and it will declare it here as a dependency of the project. So that, so that when I push it to uh, GitHub and you download it, right, if you do an npm install, it will reinstall all the libraries, right, so that you are as if uh, this, you'll be at the same point where I am. Okay? All right, so npm install mongoose, so that will download mongoose and install it and put it in node modules. Put it somewhere. Um, you could put a flag and say npm install dash g, right? So install mongoose in a, in a global location, right? So that now it will be available for all Node.js projects. Right? We do that uh, in our in our projects. We do that. We use the dash g right? as opposed to doing it for all every single project. All right, so it's downloading. Uh, it's pretty slow. Come on. Is it just me or the network slow? I don't think I'm even connected. Let me try that again. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, installs it. It's downloading, installing it locally. And if we it notice that uh, there it is, see that uh, in my package JSON it added the dependency mongoose. Right, this is this is the equivalent of a palm file. Right, package JSON is the equivalent of palm that's saying, you know, I depend on these other libraries. Right, um, and uh, an npm is the equivalent of Maven. Right, where you know, if you do Maven clean, it's the same thing as doing here like a Maven install. Right, it reads the palm and downloads the libraries and installs it. Same thing here, right? So it's equivalent. Um, all right. Uh, all right. So we, we downloaded it. So from our app.js, from our, our app.js, um, we we can now load the library. We're going to load the library. Okay. We're going to say var mongoose. Okay. We're going to require and require mongoose. Okay, so we basically we're loading that library by name, uh, and then uh, let's follow the over here. We're going to connect. 
connect, and uh, if it's localhost, it'll assume that uh, it's, it's running locally, the server uh, is at 127.001, uh, it'll, uh, I'm sorry, at 27,000 something or other. Uh, you mean the port is implicit? The port is implicit, yeah, 27017. It'll assume that the, the server is running at the default port number, right, and you can, you can override it. Um, and this is the database we want to connect to. I'll say HMH, right, because that's the, that's the, that's the database we, we uh, no, the database we created uh, at the command line. Right? But we, we can call it whatever we want, okay? Uh, if it do, again, if, if it doesn't find it, it'll create it, right? Uh, if it does find it, it'll use the one that is already there. Everybody okay? All right. So a table is like a collection. The collection's like a table, exactly. It's the equivalent, yes. Um, all right, so uh, Mongo, uh, So even though uh, MongoDB doesn't enforce schema, it doesn't enforce any validation, uh, data type validation, it doesn't enforce anything, um, what happens is that all that responsibility is now at the hands of the application. It has to be at application level uh, validation, okay? Uh, and so we're going to use Mongoose to uh, bring some some uh, measure of, uh, of sanity uh, to the database access, right? So we, uh, Mongoose will allow us to create a schema right, that whenever we try to insert into, into MongoDB, it will first validate our records, right, or JSON against that schema. If it's valid, then it will do the insert into MongoDB, okay? So it won't be server-side validation. It would be you know, our app, app level validation, okay? So we'll create a schema. We can say var uh, product schema. And uh, we're going to use the mongoose uh, library to declare a schema. And uh, that schema, uh, right now, uh, it'll just have a name. And it's a string. Okay. Uh, you can do all other things, such as it's required. Uh, it has to match this regular expression. Uh, these are the only valid values. You can do all sorts of things that you can, you can validate, right? Um, you can give it a default value, uh, all sorts of things uh, that, that you would expect. Um, so yeah, so there we go. We have a schema. It's a very simple schema. Uh, how about also we can add a, um, a created, uh, we can say this could be a date object. Right? We have to provide a date instance. Um, that would be that would be great. Uh, or you can you can say if you want to configure it, uh, you can give it an object to configure it. You can say that the type is date. Okay, this is this is the equivalent to just saying this. That's the equivalent to just saying that. But if you want to do further configuration, uh, you can use this syntax when you say type date, right? And you can say things such as uh, default. Uh, the default value, right, is date dot now. So you can provide a function, right, that will be called at creation time, right. It will be invoked, and then whatever that function returns, will provide the value for that for that record. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah. You can put a callback. It will invoke that, right, and then you can compute whatever you want for that value. Yep. Yeah, you can uh, you can say uh, required true. Yes, so uh, MongoDB is a uh, is meant for um, uh, running in, in, in several uh, threads and several processes, and and automatically they find each other and if if they are in the same uh, domain, uh, and and they could you know they could do load balancing. And it's, 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 yeah, you, you, there's a whole administration part of part of this on how to configure configure all these things, uh, uh, and that's a whole course unto itself on how to administer uh, a Mongo MongoDB. Right, so I'm I'm more focusing on the development part of this. Uh, from a developer's point of view, you don't need to do anything, right? That, that's all admin stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, required true. Are we okay? All right, so so that that creates the schema. Uh, then then um, so this is the equivalent of having created the schema at the database level. We would do this in a, in a, in a relational database, 
we would do this at the on the database side, right? Here we're doing it at the application side, right? Uh, just because you know, Mongo just doesn't there's no um, there's no notion of a schema in Mongo, right? Um, so the the next part is to create an object that will allow us to actually interact with the database, right? The equivalent of an entity manager in uh, in um, in Java, right? Uh, that which allows you to you know, call the dot create or dot save or dot right that, that you can call this right. Uh, so for that, uh, typically we call it the the model, okay, a, a mongoose model, right, uh, which will be again the equivalent of an entity entity manager. Uh, so this will be a mongoose model, okay, uh, which you give it a name. Uh, your registering an entity manager called product model, and it will be known across all Mongo, uh, 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 all Mongoose, the entire Mongoose uh, framework. So you can you can retrieve this model, so you can use it anywhere else. You can say Mongoose.model by name, right? And then you can start connecting and talking to this, right? And I'm going to say comma, and then the schema. So it's going to validate all all actions to the database. It's going to first validate it against the schema. If you're trying to insert something, it will first validate it against the schema. If it doesn't match the schema, it will reject the insert. Okay. Um, also, when it retrieves st stuff from the database, right, it will instantiate instances of these objects, right, which will have attributes name and uh, created, read from the database, right, onto here. Okay. Everybody good? All right. Um, so we have here. Uh, so that, that's it. That's all we need to do. In the in the uh, now we need to go back to the create right and replace all these things right. Uh, these were uh, written to modify a local array. This array right here. Okay. Um, but what we really want to do is is go and write it to the uh, to the actual database right. Same thing. This uh, this um, this find find all products, right? It's reading from the local array. Really, we want to uh, talk to the to the actual database, right? And retrieve things from the database, okay? All right, so let's let's do this one first. Find all products, find all products, right? So instead of this, instead of this, by right, returning the local array, we want to use the product, the product model, which is our entity manager, right? And we want to do basically the same thing we would do at the command line. We want to do a find, dot find. Uh, and if I don't provide any any filters, it means I want all of it, right? Uh, I don't want just one. I just want all of them, right? Um, uh, so so this this find uh, it's asynchronous, right? Meaning this is going to start in its own thread, right? It's going to go out to the database. Right? It's going to take a couple milliseconds for communicating with the database. The database might be across the world, right? Uh, the URL, you know, whatever URL you're using to connect to it. It might take a while, right? For so so this is so we're gonna have three machines, right? We have a browser running on some machine, talking to the Node.js server, which is running in some other machine, and the database server running yet in another machine, right? So just like we did client to server, we it was a, a synchronous call, right? And we need to do we needed we needed to do promises and all that, right? Uh, now we're gonna have something similar. We're gonna have also a synchronous communication from the Node.js server. Connecting asynchronously to the database server, right? So we need to take take that into account before the array lived in the same process, right, as a server. Now the database runs in some other process. So so this right here is an asynchronous call. That's an asynchronous call, right? Uh, so so at some point this asynchronous call will come back. Will come back. This returns a promise saying, at some point, sometime in the future, uh, I will notify you uh, that uh, that data came back from the server. Right. So you need to register a callback function for me to call you back and pass you the data. Right. So to register, we use exactly the same uh, syntax that we use in the client. The dot then. Right. Uh, the dot then allows us to register a, a callback function. Here's a callback function. Uh, and the response is right here. This is the what comes back from the database. You know, hopefully, what comes back from the database? Hopefully, it's products. Right? An array of products, hopefully. Right? Uh, let's see what, uh, what this comes back, console 
dot products. Okay. Um, and we are going to send it back to send the products back to the, the client who is patiently waiting, right? The client sent the request. The request comes here. Here it is, right? Uh, the server made another request to the server, to the to the database server. Uh, the client is still waiting. It's spinning, right? It's, it's still waiting. The request never came back. Not until we send back a response, the client knows anything about this, right? So, so the, the, the so so there's two hops, right? The client goes to the server. The server goes to the database. The server comes back, and then we can we can respond back to the data back to the client. Make sense? Everybody okay? All right. So let's uh, let's let's run this. Let's see if this uh, blows up. Uh, so if we come back and uh, run this uh, local, what do we call it, web app? Right, comes back, probably notice that it's empty. Right, notice that it's empty. Uh, we can look at the uh, the network, um, the network traffic, and notice that, uh, let's do that again, network. Notice that the product API went out to the server and it came back with an empty array, which makes sense, right? There are no products in the database. Yes? Are we okay? Um, that makes sense. Let's uh, let's create one right now. The 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 if I if I do this right, it's going to go out to the server, but it's going to push it where? It's going to push it to the local array. It's not pushing it to the database, right? Uh, it's coming here. I right? would put a breakpoint. It's coming to this post. It's this post right here. Create products. It's coming in here, right? So if we if we post, notice it's coming here. This create product, right? Uh, it's going to push it to the local array. That's not really what we want. Right. Instead, what we want to do, so let's, re let's replace this. We got the product. Instead of doing this, uh, what we would like to be able to do is um, use the product model, right? And we want to insert, right? We want to insert into the database. Uh, the API here is not insert. Well, insert would work too, but uh, it's, it's this one, create. Right? It's, it's, it's an insert. It's the equivalent of an insert. Uh, and uh, and would insert whatever you give it as a JSON object, right? It doesn't insert. Uh, and this too uh, responds with a, res it's, it's an asynchronous call, right? It goes out to the server, right? It doesn't insert in the database, comes back, and at some point, right, it's going to call whatever, whatever uh, callback we give it, right? Now, inserts uh, uh, respond with the object that was inserted, right? So, this is the product uh, that was actually inserted, and we can console display it. Console log and display the product that was inserted. And once we have it, uh, we can respond back to the to the database to the, to the client. We can respond with a success, right? We can say, "Yep, it was successful." Right, it was successful. So let's start that again. Let's restart the server. Uh, let's go back to the to the client uh, uh, Mongo. And uh, we are using HMH, right? Uh, there are these are the collections that we know of: lesson and product. Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, do a uh, uh, an insert. Let's do an insert. So let's create this one. Say uh, host. Okay. Uh, and let's see what the collections are. Uh, that didn't seem to work. <laughs> uh, did actually did I restart the server? I thought I did, didn't I? Let's see, let's put a breakpoint here. Put a breakpoint right here. Let's do it again. Post. Okay, so we're there. Um, let's step through this. Okay, product model. Continue. Uh, something happened. Uh, it didn't like that. So notice that it did not stop at this then. Okay, that means that there must have been some error. Okay. Uh, the uh, if you remember from the client, uh, the, the the then allows you to uh, uh, register two functions: one that will be invoked if it's successful, and one that will be invoked if there's an error. Okay, so this is the function. This is a success function, right? Uh, we can register a another function right here that will send back an error if something happens. So let's do a console. Oh, it's not dot error. Yeah, oh, you can use that syntax too. Uh, you can use either one. They're equivalent. Uh, so let's do the error and let's put a breakpoint right here. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that it's failing. Let's see. 
This mm -hmm. makes a little bit more sense if you put every all mm -hmm. at that level. Yep. I have a chain of bends and a dot error at the end. I wasn't sure where the error would be possible. Right. You, you can use either syntax, but uh, and you can have an error for each one. Right? Like each one could have like a try catch, right? Uh, it's the equivalent of try catch. Right, so one will be invoked if it's, if it's uh, successful. One that will not. But yeah, you, you, uh, the, I think this syntax is a little bit easier. Uh, okay, so let's try it again. Let's post. Okay, it's in here, uh, and let's continue. Okay, notice that the error was invoked. See that the error was invoked. We we'll look at the we we'll look at the error message. Uh, validation. Okay, so validation fails. Um, uh, hmm. Name? No date. No date? Uh, there was a default. But it was a default. It was a default. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's continue. Let's try it again. Um, let me remove the required to see if that's the case. If that's the problem. Let's, see. Okay, let's try it again. Let's refresh. Okay. Because it's here. And let's continue. Still gives me an error. Validation. Validation. Name. Validation. So it doesn't like my name. Is it not making it? Wait a minute. Let me post it again. So let me see what's what what's being sent. So this is what's being sent. Name is being sent. Okay. Oh, we are, we are passing an ID, right? That, the ID makes no sense at this point, right? Because the server is going to create the IDs. Remember, we, we were creating the IDs ourselves. Uh, I forget where we were creating these IDs. Do you remember right. where we were creating? Was it in the client side? Was it in the in the client? I forget. Uh, probably in the probably in the service, maybe. No, maybe in the the was it at the controller? Uh, product update delete list app product oh there it is product ID new product ID the ID so right we're creating we're creating a bogus ID let's see if that if that's okay um, okay so let's uh, step one let me see what the product is coming from the client we can hover over it and let's see product object so we get the name okay that's that's Hopeful. Okay, right. It didn't like that ID right, because it was creating its own its own ID. Right, so let's continue. Uh, and notice that the that it made it back, right? Because there were two queries: one that posted, that's a post, and then there's a second one followed by the get, right? But now the get is retrieving it from the database, right? So the post is inserting in the database, and the get is retrieving from the database, right? So we have those two. Uh, let's check the database, what's, what's it doing. If I say show collections, notice that I created this new collection that says product models, right? So that product models is a, is a name that Mongoose uh, chooses by default. Uh, it's, um, it's uh, which one is it? Products, it's this one, right? It's based on, it's based on this name right here, this product model, right? Uh, and what it does is it takes it, it, it makes it all uh, lowercase, and it adds an S at the end. I don't like that it takes over the naming convention of, uh, of, the, of, of the actual collection that we're going to use. Uh, so, so you can override that and say, no, 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 I don't want you to choose the name for me. Okay? Uh, although it's pretty good at capitalizing, at, at uh, uh, pluralizing uh, words, um, uh, I, don't, I don't like it. So instead you can, you can tell it. You, you can configure the actual collection that you want to use, right? You give it the name, I can say, I want you to use product. Right? There is already a product uh, collection in there, okay? So if we refresh this, we refresh this, and uh, we re, and we re, notice that we have E3D, remember that, 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 that product we had inserted manually in the database, right? And we had name E3D. So it's reading from that collection there, as opposed to the other one. And we could create other ones, you know, R180, uh, add, right? Uh, let's, let's remove uh, these breakpoints. Continue. Uh, there's R180, and indeed, we can say db.products, uh, 
product uh, dot find. Right, we have both of them, E3D. Notice that the, the second one that we created, right, notice that it has the created field, right, with the timestamp. Uh, but the one we created manually does not have the timestamp, right? Um, because the one has a default, the other one was manual. Are we okay? Right. Uh, all right. So, so how about um, being able to remove? Right. We want to be able to remove this remove. Um, if you remember, where is tied to this delete right here? Right. Still this delete. It's removing from the array. Right. Remember this delete product. Right. It's it gets the ID. Uh, and then looks for the product right in the array that finds it it splice it out we don't want that right we want to remove it from the database right not from the local array uh, the the parameter is still product ID right but instead of doing this right we want to remove it from the database right so to do that we're still going to use the entity manager right uh, which will be product model uh, and this has remove right so remove it takes as argument a filter. So, uh, you need to tell me the criteria by which to find which records do you want me to remove, right? Um, and uh, and uh, uh, our our uh, uh, search will be on the ID. We're going to try and match the ID. Right? We'll remove the record whose ID matches whatever the product ID is coming from the client. Yes. Right. So we're going to say ID. And says uh, we're going to match the product ID. See that? Right. Um, and again, this too will return a uh, a promise, right, which we can register a callback. So the first callback is the successful callback. In uh, this one, it returns a status, right, a status telling us how many records were removed, right, how many records were affected. Okay. Uh, and if it's successful. Uh, we're going to respond with a 200, right, saying, yep, it's OK. Everything went OK. Uh, so if we restart the server, restart the server, uh, and we refresh uh, this, uh, we can uh, retreat. And we, we can see that um, we, we have these, the E3D and R 180. Sometimes if these have way too many fields, right, it will be hard to read. Uh, you can uh, pipe this to. Um, Pretty, pretty, right? And so it, it breaks it up so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, anything anything that the uh, database adds, any fields that the database adds itself, are 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 prefixed with an underscore. Okay, uh, so the underscore ID was created by MongoDB, right? Also, there's an underscore underscore V that's for versioning, right? It has its own indexing and versioning mechanism uh, that happens in the background. That's uh, Again, that's for admin, admin purposes that you can. I'm sorry. Yeah, only JSON objects. Yeah, uh, yeah. From 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 JavaScript's point of view, it's it's the raw you know uh, data model, right? The data model. So you can store objects that contain other objects that contain other objects, right? You can embed objects. You can have arrays of objects within arrays of objects. So you can have an entire JSON object in there, right? Um, or you can have references to other objects, right? The preferred way is that you would you would store the raw JSON object without references, but that that uh, it depends, right? If if you have objects that are shared objects, then preferable it's it's references, right? Because you don't want to have redundancy and things like that. Um, anyway, uh, so let's remove. So if I remove E3D, uh, notice that. Uh, uh, notice that E3 is no longer in the in the database. Right, has been removed. Uh, we only are left with R180. Uh, so let's see. We already have. Uh, we'll be able to create. We'll be able to to find all. We have. We we're able to create one instance. Uh, how about editing? Right. Uh, for instance, uh, if I if I click on this, um, if I click on the uh, on this here, presumably it's going to fetch. That one product, right? But notice that it's not re retrieving it, right? It's pending, right? Uh, actually, that's because on the server side, uh, that's being implemented by this one, right? Find product by ID, right? It's this one right here. If we put a breakpoint here, 
Uh, notice that uh, if uh, we refresh and we retrieve this, we're going to go in there, right? See that? We are here. But it's looking it up using the for loop, right? Looking in the array. But we don't have the array anymore, right? We're not using the array. So I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to stop the server. Uh, instead, again, we're going to use the entity manager to retrieve not all of them, only one. We're going to retrieve just one. Uh, so to do that, we can say product model. And then again, there's a find. Find can you can provide a uh, a, 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 a filter and say I want to find not all. I don't want all of them. I just want the ones that match uh, this product ID, right? Uh, and uh, and this this then this will retrieve uh, will retrieve those record that match, right? That ID. The problem is that it doesn't retrieve one. It always retrieves an array, even if it's just one. Okay, or even if it's one. So this is actually the products that matched. Now we know that product IDs is unique identifier. Uh, so when we respond, right, when we send back the the data, we know that it's the first one that we want to in that array. Right. So it's uh, products sub zero. Right. And we know it's it's going to be an array of products that can come back. All right, so let's uh, let's restart that. Put a breakpoint here. Uh, so if we refresh this and we retrieve this one, right? We go back to the server. We retrieve the product ID. There it is, right? Uh, and uh, if we continue, there it is. If we if we hover over the product, notice it's an array of one. See that? Uh, and it contains. It contains a uh, uh, the first the, the the only one that matches, right? Uh, so if we continue, right? Notice that it did retrieve it, right? It came back. It came back as that one single product, right? With the created and name and everything, right? So it's working. Um, so there was a syntactic sugar version of this, right? That um, that just makes it uh, a little bit easier to write. Uh, so, for instance, there's find by ID, right? Which makes it just a little bit easier to write it, right? You don't have to do the filter, right? It's expecting the primary key. Uh, it also makes it uh, understand that since it's it's unique, uh, it doesn't retrieve an array, right? It retrieves that one single uh, instance, right? So that you don't have to do do this do, do, do this array thing, right? It's only one. Right? There's only one that matches the primary key, right? So we, 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 if we restart the server, this should behave exactly the same way. Okay? So if we refresh, uh, we can retrieve that one element. It works exactly the same way. Make sense? It's only syntactic sugar, right? It's a right. It's a, it, underneath it uses find, right, and it does the the filtering. Yes, right. Um, all right. Since we have this now, we, it, we should also be able to click on this and navigate to the product details, right? Product details, uh, which should allow us to edit this, right? And edit, uh, right now, update goes where? Update goes to this put, right? This, this update product, right? Which goes here, which again, uses a for loop, right? The, or the array, so we don't, we're not using that anymore, right? So if I do an update, I'm going to go in here, right, get the product ID, get the product ID, uh, get the product body. You start iterating over an array that doesn't exist, right? There's the, it's not going to find it, right? It's not going to find it. So, um, so that's why this stays, this stays pending, right? It never comes back from the server because I never respond. Uh, so let me just stop the server there. Let me stop the server. Uh, so in this update, instead, what we're going to do, right, we're going to... Uh, comment this out because we're no longer using the array. Instead, uh, we're going to use product model that update. Right? So update is going to allow us to update uh, the object. Uh, this takes two arguments. The first argument is a filter, meaning which record do you want to update? Right? The one that matches the filter. Right? And the filter in this case is we're going to filter by the ID because we have the ID. There's a product ID. There it is. Product ID. Right. Uh, the second argument is what do we want to change? Right. What what fields do we want to change? Right. Uh, so in this case, uh, for now, we're just going to update the name field. Right. 
Um, we can just say, no, you want the whole thing. right, if you want the whole thing, right, if you want to uh, update the whole thing, uh, notice that this object, right, actually matches exactly the schema of this product. So we could just say product, right, all the fields match, right, name matches with ma name, uh, created, created, would presumably match with created, right. Uh, so that's actually very convenient, right, that it matches exactly the, 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 the field, right. So this says that uh, the name field will be updated with a new value of the name field, right? Uh, this too returns a, 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 a way for us to um, uh, register a callback, right? And this will returns a status saying how many records were updated, right? If, if it succeeded or didn't succeed or something, right? Uh, and in here we can uh, we can then send back you know, whether it was successful or not, right? Um, so, so let's, uh, let, let's uh, restart the server, right? And we can uh, update this. There's R180, uh, and uh, we can change it to R180U, uh, 321. The update uh, comes in here. Let's see, and if we continue. Uh, it's successfully updated if we look at the status. Uh, it says that um, N1 means that uh, only one record was modified. It was everything was okay, um, and we're going to respond with a with a, a with an okay to the to the client. So the client comes back and notice that it went back to fetch all the products, and indeed, the R180 the name was updated in the server, okay, in the database. You see that, all right? Uh, right and. Uh, Um, okay, so basically we, we replaced we replaced the use of this array. We no longer need this array, so we can we can comment this out. Uh, I don't believe we're using this product array anywhere. Uh, let's comment it out. All right, comment it, comment this. Okay. All right, so we no longer use that array anywhere. Okay, right. So we replaced the whole thing. All right. All right. So uh, let's uh. Um, any, any questions so far? Right. So basically, we replace all the CRUD with, with the database. Um, all right, so let's, let's, I'm going to move a couple of things here because this app.js is getting fairly, fairly long, right? fairly long. And, and I also want to like to uh, just re-architect this a little bit. I'm not going to change any features. I'm just going to move some things around uh, just because it's getting out of hand. It's, it's a little bit too, too much. Uh, ideally, uh, ideally, uh, um, these things over here, these are web services, right? These are web services. Uh, so, and, and, and you would have web services for different entities, right? So these are web services only for the product. If you have web services for the lesson, you would have, you know, five more of these for the lesson, right? And so for each entity, you would probably have five of these, right? To be uh, uh, these RESTful uh, API for each entity, right? Uh, so this could get out of hand if we if we declare all the all these in here, right? So ideally, we would put uh, all the services under a directory as services, right? Uh, so in here, you would have services for the products, the services for the for the lessons, uh, services for students, services for teachers, services for for each entity that you would have. You're very much like you, you would do in uh, in Java, right? You would have different different resources uh, you know, for each one of the entity, right? Uh, so for instance, we, would, we, we could move, uh, we could move uh, services for, uh, yeah, exactly, something like that, right? So let's create here uh, the JavaScript. We could say product, product dot a service dot server dot JS, okay? This is the equivalent of the product that serves that client that js right, that we wrote a, a, a couple last week. This one product that service that client. This is the one who generates the HTTP requests. Right on the other side, there should be somebody who listens for that. Right, where where does where is that right now? It's actually in here, right in app js. Right, so let's move all this out of here. Let's move everything from out of here. Let's move it out of here and let's put it 
you know, so actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to copy this whole thing. I'm gonna copy, copy, I'm just going to move it in here. Okay. Okay, so this, this is uh, the service. I just moved it from here. I just moved it from here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove all this stuff from here. Remove it, right? And I just moved it into here, okay? Uh, and from here, I'm going to require, I'm going to say require, right, uh, the services slash product service, and I'm going to pass this argument, the app right, that was passed to me, I'm going to pass it along uh, to the service, right, which is because it's expecting it right here. Right? I only moved it here so that uh, now, right, we could create yet another one of these, but for lessons. Right? And then we could create another one for students, and another one for teachers, and another one for a whole bunch of these. Right? This would allow me to create each one of these in separate files, and would allow me to grow my services. Right? Uh, so let's see. Uh, hopefully I didn't break anything. Let's restart the server. I only moved, moved a couple things around. Uh, let me refresh. Yes, nothing broke. Right? Uh, so I should be able to do uh, S44. Okay, so everything works the same way. Uh, but it's it's a little more uh, manageable now, right? I could now create a whole bunch of services. Uh, you would do the same thing for the model, right? You could say uh, in the models, you know, just like you were doing Java, right? You would have a separate folder where you put all your models, right? The model should be agnostic to you know, how they're being used, right? It doesn't, it, sh it shouldn't care whether it's being accessed by HTTP uh, or it should be accessed by local, you know, calls, right? Uh, so all this model business here, all this access to the data, to the model, right, uh, should be uh, you know in a separate right, in a separate place, right? So uh, so for instance, uh, in here you, you would create models such as uh, one for product, right? And in product you can have, uh, for instance, uh, you can have uh, one file for the schema, product. Dot schema dot server uh, js right in here uh, you could house declaration of this schema right you could you could post that in there right, in the schema right? uh, and uh, all the CRUD operations of uh, of create and uh, all that notice that right now it's blended right we have we have uh, the services right together with the model it's all in one single file right. Uh, that that is a bad practice, right? Because we would, we would have a uh, the the model is in its 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 own can only be used from HTTP. Right? It can't be used from outside of HTTP, right? Uh, so so if we would want to rip this out and put it in a separate file, you know, maybe in here and call it maybe product that model that server JS, right? We could, we could put it in there, uh, but I, I think that would be a little bit too much. I, I, I don't know. I, th I think uh, that, would, that would be. Um, well, let's leave that for the for, for, for next next week. Uh, Rearchitecting a little bit so that it's um, it would make it easier to, to, to work with. Right? We need to rip out the model from here and put it, make it agnostic to HTTP. Okay, we'll do that next week. Uh, but at least we ripped out the service and we put it in a separate in a separate file. Right? That makes sense. Right? Basically, we re replaced all the CRUD operations instead of going to local Node.js. Uh, so that now it lives in Mongo, Mongo. All right, awesome. Uh, I'll create an assignment uh, so that uh, you could you could now practice with the lessons, right? Right. You could implement the same thing, but for lessons. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.